Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Um, we have a very exciting night ahead, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it here in just a second. But um, I did want to make a note. So uh, last year, myself and Zach and um, many of our you know colleagues who speak to our members over the phone, we got so many questions, especially around the holidays, about what pairings you know, you should have with your society whiskeys. And, you know, we kind of each have our own go-to pairings, um, but it just kind of got our brains kind of going. And um, essentially what we're going to do over the course of this year is we are going to be bringing on people from all different types of culinary backgrounds um, to kind of come in and teach us about things that we can pair with our society whiskeys. And I am so, I'm like having a total fangirl moment right now because I'm so excited for our first guest um, in this, you know, kind of pairing series that we're going to be putting on. Um, and I, I'm just over the moon. I'm staring at these incredible cheeses in front of me and I have whiskey here to my right and I cannot wait to put these two things together and just have a total ratatouille moment um, and just kind of have this magical experience of how to pair cheese with whiskey. So um, I wanted to thank everyone for jumping on and joining us tonight. I promise you it's going to be so much fun. And um, I hope you learn lots of good things about cheese and whiskey so you can go out and put on your own epic cheese and whiskey pairing. So um, without further ado, I would like to bring on our guest, uh, Erica Kubik, who is a cheese preacher. So we are about to attend this amazing sermon of cheese tonight. Um, and also the author of Cheese, Sex, Death. And if you do not have this book, we're going to talk about it because it is absolutely amazing. But let me bring on Erica. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much. How are you? A wonderful introduction. I love that you referenced yes. ratatouille. That's one of my favorite moments in cinema history. When you yes, put the I, cheese and the strawberry together. Yes. And then like all the stuff like out of his brain. And it's like, I talk about that moment all the time um, because it is one of my favorite moments in film too. So we're best friends now. Did we just <laughs> become best friends? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess for everybody who doesn't know who you are yet, um, do you mind kind of just letting us know, you know, who Erica is and, you know, what led you into becoming a, a cheese preacher? Yeah, totally. Um, so my, well, basically I call myself a cheese preacher. I was a cheese monger, um, but my career has shifted into away from the cheese counter and just teaching people about cheese. Um, so I preach about the heard word through social media <laughs> and through events like this. I call these classes Cheese Church. It's a whole brand. I love it. I love it. Of course, through my book, which is a Bible. There's even a little stained glass in there. I really committed to this theme. <laughs> this, so this book, it's so funny. Like when I first like, you know, heard about you and we're, or we're starting to learn about what you do, I was like, Cheese Sex Death. I was like, what the hell is this book going to be about? Like. You know, like just the title itself, like has your mind going in a million different directions. And, you know, as I've been kind of sifting through it, I mean, this is such a comprehensive, not only guide to cheese, I've, I've learned so much in just the short time that I've had my nose in this thing. Um, but it's also a, a, like there's a history lesson here. There's a lot to, to learn in this book. So um, it's I, I cannot this should be everyone who even vaguely likes cheese should have this book um, because it's it's amazing and it's just beautifully shot like every photo I don't know if you can see with my light but every photo in this book is just it's it's beautiful so well Thank done you. on that. <laughs> yeah I love that you like pulled out the history because I think it's incredible that cheese is such a deep um, correlation with the development of human civilization. I actually just taught a cheese history class and like, I didn't see myself becoming a history nerd back in the day, but when you look, go into cheese history, it is so fascinating. Cheese making has been there like every step of the way since the dawn of agriculture. It's incredible. And actually religions had a big impact on cheese as well. So I didn't create a brand idea. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I didn't know I mean, like I said, I've learned so much in just the short time that I've been reading through this book. And yeah, so George Keenan, uh, he noted that I have all these bookmarks already in the book because, I mean, it really is one of those things that, 
it's like, I didn't know that. Why didn't I know that? And I want to bookmark it so I can go back and, and like reference it. And it's a, uh, yeah. So good, good call on that, George. <laughs> um, but I, I too wanted to, to make note that, um, you know, not only is this a history lesson, is it a guide to, I mean, I didn't even know half of these cheeses existed. I mean, there's so many different varieties out there. Um, and I you have scratch the surface too. I get emails it, like you forgot this cheese. And I'm like, oh my God, I know it breaks my heart. But I just have to write <laughs> another book. Yeah, <laughs> you do. Like out there. You need a series of cheese Bibles that, you yeah. know, you can line up. But um, one other thing that I really loved about the book is that you, you put together um, like pairings. So just mm -hmm. like what we're going to talk about tonight. So literally anything from pairing cheese with meat, uh, fruit, cookies, cannabis, um, mm -hmm. nuts. I mean, there is anything. I think I saw a pairing for like spicy Cheetos. Oh, yeah. Here totally. too. And I was I like, I never, cheese. I would have never thought to pair cheese with spicy Cheetos. <laughs> it's just so cool. Um, so, all right, I'm done totally fangirling and nerding out <laughs> over this book because I'm having so much fun uh, digging into this, but uh, that means my heart. Thank you so much for appreciating it and enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. So um, tonight, what we're going to be doing is um, I we have sent you over four society whiskeys, oh, yeah. um, and we have sent you over four from four different flavor profiles. And basically, what we, what we did is you tasted through them, and you sent me over a list of different types of cheese to pair with these whiskeys. Um, and so what we'll do is we're going to taste through them. So excited. Um, and then we'll kind of pick your brain, you know, as to why you chose this type of cheese to pair with this kind of whiskey. Um, and we'll go from there. And then um, for everybody who is joining us tonight, if you do have any questions for Erica, please do drop them in the comments um, and we'll toss them up on the screen. And uh, that way she can answer all of your cheesy questions. And, and it looks like George also said, I ordered cheese sex death last week with Jenna's help as a gift for my wife. And it arrived today. Perfect timing. We're tuned in with a few pours of 53.375 and her dogs, Neville and cheese. Oh, <laughs> yay. That's, That's so nice. awesome. That's a great name for a dog. I love it. it. Is. Well, thank you, George, for joining. And I know uh, member Charles Hoffman, he uh, sent me over an email. I know he has some whiskeys poured and went and picked up some cheese so he can enjoy a lot with us as well. So I think we have a, a pretty rad little little group tonight. And I'm ready to dig in and learn from you. <laughs> totally. You know, I All think right. a lot of people... Um, when they think about pairing things with cheese, they automatically go to wine. And like, obviously it's classic. There are so many amazing wine and cheese pairings out there. But personally, I think it's kind of difficult because wine has such a crazy range, you know, like yeah. you can, even just within one cat or one grape varietal, um, as far as the flavors go. So it's a little bit difficult to fully predict exactly what cheese will go with which wine. Um, and like there, you know, I, I still have a whole, category of pairing cheese and wine. <laughs> so like it, it can be done and there's definitely like hard and fast rules that you can live by. But I actually think whiskey is a very forgotten about pairing. It's very overlooked. It goes so well. And the reason why, or one reason why is because cheese doesn't have, or whiskey doesn't have tannins in it, unlike a red wine. Tannins can actually dull your palate and it prevents you from tasting all of the complexities in the cheese. And they can also, they kind of combat the cheese in a way like they can just be a little bit too aggressive for some of the flavors within a cheese whiskey doesn't have that issue and because of the heat of the alcohol it does kind of cleanse your palate in between bites so it's like an automatic built-in palate cleanser as well which is really cool I mean I definitely also love to like cleanse my palate between the different whiskeys if I'm doing a full tasting like this because like obviously you want to be ready and prepared for the next right. one um, but another really great reason why I love pairing cheese and whiskey is because cheese has so much fat in it, which helps slow the absorption of alcohol into your bloodstream. So if you're a lightweight like me, you can drink more when you're eating cheese. Cool. Fun fact of the week. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I like it. I like it. And overall, I mean, I think the flavors are very compatible. Cheese is always salty and whiskeys tend to have more of that, like not always sweet, but there is like a woodsy sweetness to it. That's always there from the barrel. So they're just like are naturally great partners. Yeah. I've never, I mean, I've had whiskey with cheese before in, you know, my whiskey lifetime, but I've never had something like this directed before. Um, it's always just been like, what's in my fridge or, you know, like, which is typically like, there's always Gouda in my fridge and it's not like the one we're having tonight. I've never, this is like fancy Gouda. I've never had it. Like, I just usually will roll down the Trader Joe's and grab like the smoked Gouda. Um, and I always have them in my fridge. So I'm really Trader excited. Trader Joe's is like, an amazing cheese. The thousand they do. at Trader Joe's, like that's an amazing pairing with whiskey with pretty much any whiskey. So, okay. It's still doing All that. right. Well, I'm on the right track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'm excited to be like guided to, to the light and uh, really learn like how to do this, you know, properly, so to speak. Um, so I can share this with friends and family in the future. Um, and when members call, you know, I can say, oh, yes, I do know what kind of cheese to pair, you know, with this whiskey. And then I can, you know, bring them back here so they can watch you kind of break it all down for us. So cool. I love that. Super um, stoked. So shall we get into the first one? I think it's time. I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> excited. Like I've it. been staring at these for an hour and it's been like torture. <laughs> um, so just like a couple things before we jump in, just like a couple, I call it like my cheese 101 sermon. Um, but I love to like say just a couple ground rules. I'm calling them rules okay. because it sounds too strict. But if you want to get the best experience out of your cheese tasting, this is yes. these are just helpful tips. Um, first of all, I recommend bringing your cheese to room temperature anytime you're doing a tasting like this. Um, similar to beverages, your the cold temperature dulls the flavors in both beverages and the cheese. But for cheese, the cold temperature also makes the texture more brittle. So like I have this crazy like ooey gooey thing happening right here. If that was cold, it wouldn't have that pudge that it, like that little like jelly pudge, which is a big reason why the cheese is so much fun to eat. Um, so bring it to room temperature. The other thing I suggest is if you have like stinky cheeses to always have one knife per stinky cheese. I mean, the harder ones I don't have a knife for, I already cut them, but you just don't want to cross contaminate the flavors because otherwise okay. everything starts tasting the same. And it's like, why are we even doing this pairing? You know? Okay. Um, and yeah, other than that, just tasting it right. You know, I'm sure you guys had the same spiel as far as like, fully appreciating scotches and like how to fully taste them. Um, but the way I like to describe it, as far as eating cheese, I recommend using all of your senses. So first you want to like take a look at your cheese and take in her beauty. This is the midnight moon that I'm holding up and demonstrating with. And then you want to smell it. So there's a okay. lot of the flavors that are going to come through in the olfactory system. And then you want to like give it a little squeeze. You can even like break it apart in your hand. That helps you get like a sense of what the texture is going to be like. Okay. And then after that, you eat it. So, okay. yeah. Um, do you have a preference about whether we start with the whiskey or the cheese? I kind of swing both ways. I was going to ask you. Um, but before we get into that, I did want to ask. I have not cut anything yet. Oh, because in cool. the book, I saw that there is actual proper, like, ways to cut your cheese, which I yes. never knew. I just hack it up and eat it. So I haven't Good touched fun. it. I have knife. I have, I have it all ready here. But... Um, which you, you share with us. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Love that. All right, so, okay. so you have the midnight moon Gouda. This is a goat smell yes. Gouda that comes from Cypress Grove in California. Um, it's a fan. Well, actually it's made in the Netherlands, but the business is in California. They just like <laughs> brand it and bring it over, but it is, so it's a classic right. Dutch Gouda. Um, but the difference is that it's made with goat's milk, which is different than cow's milk. So when you have a cheese like this and it's in that shape, you want to maintain that shape. You really get the prettiest cuts that way. So I recommend slicing off like this. The outer side of it is wax. Um, all cheese runs are edible, but if it's wax on the outside, the wax is not edible. So you just want to slice that part off. Try to be as like thin as possible. So you're just getting like the wax and like the hard part of the rind. Okay. And then you're just going to make the same shape slices and just go, you know, for as many slices as you want. Okay. And you want to like maintain that triangular shape. Okay. And it's nice because it kind of just peels right off. Oh yeah, I know exactly. That's that rind especially is really it's kind of sexy to like you're like taking your clothes off. It is, I know. And then like the, the rind part is like textured Ooh. and beautiful. <laughs> and 
<laughs> all right. So let me just, all right. So cut it like this way, like exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. You can eat the rind part of it. It's pretty dry and like sometimes it has some wax residue on it. So I don't do it. Um, but okay. if you want, you can. All right. It's so inside of it. So it's a little salty. <laughs> all right. So I have my little. Perfect. Here. Yay. All right. <laughs> All right. So the first whiskey that we are going to be tasting tonight with this cheese, which um, Erica has already kind of explained to us, but I'm sure she'll have some more to say about it. Um, it's going to be cast 128.13 Welsh Delight. And um, this is a seven year uh, single malt Welsh whiskey. So not a Scotch whiskey. Um, and this was in a second fill X Oloroso butt at 62.2% ABV. And this is in our spicy and sweet flavor profile. So Midnight Moon and the whiskey. All right. So how should we start? You think we should do cheese first and then whiskey cheese and first. then together? Okay. And then do it together. Okay. So what I really love, um, a lot of people who don't think that they like goat cheese, they have an issue usually with like the tanginess of it or like that more animal quality that happens. You'll notice just like by smelling it that there's a sweet flavor. Yes, there it's is almost, a sweetness. Right? Almost like if you ever had like cajeta, just like the caramel or any kind of caramel. It just, it has like a caramel quality to it, right? And it's almost like, it almost reminds me of like, there's like a jammy kind of quality almost mm -hmm. I'm getting from this. Totally. I get strawberries. Like, I really love this. Yes. Wrote with rosé because it picks up that strawberry flavor and it's like literal strawberries and cream in your mouth. This is, this is the coolest. I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> like I do this all the time. <laughs> this is my oh my life. gosh. This is like the coolest thing ever. This um, is especially cool because of the whiskey. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So I can taste it now. Yeah. Taste it. Okay. Break a part, Ew. break a piece off first, just so you can like see how it crumbles. It just like helps your oh, mind yeah. understand how, yeah, you just appreciate the texture more when you do it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it definitely, I don't know if y'all can kind of see this. It's pretty, camera. Almost, it's not crumbly, but you can, it doesn't have like the silky elasticity a that a young Gouda has. You know, a Gouda that okay. you'd cook with, that you'd melt. This has like more of like a flake to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good <laughs> it really is oh my gosh what okay. I love about this cheese is that I love giving it to people who think that they don't like goat cheese because like I was talking about before when goat cheese is like tart and tangy some people like they don't well, react well to it but as goat cheese ages it completely transforms and it goes from like tart and tangy to just almost like cotton candy flavor I mean, that is, it is like the texture. the texture. I love, it is so like viscous and like, mm -hmm. like it's, it's in every like nook and cranny of my palate and there's almost like a crunchy. Totally. Yeah. You know, crunchy bit to that. So those are actually um, amino acids, uh, tyrosine technically. So in a Gouda, when it ages, it gets uh, several cheeses. This happens, but Gouda, I think, is the most uh, visually stunning examples. When you see like a really old Gouda and it has all of those little like crunchy crystals in there, mm. that happens as the cheese ages, um, and it is technically a amino acid. It doesn't have any flavor. It's really just like a texture, but also just like a marvel in the chemistry of cheese. So beautiful. I mean, yeah, because I mean, cheese is like a living thing right yeah yeah it's fermented so it's alive all right so i'm gonna take another bite because it was so good <laughs> well you have to you have to take more than one bite i say that you should tr try something three times before you um form an opinion on it so just let yeah, it, like, i like that rule of i like that rule of the song. first time you taste it, it's like a, a salt oh on your mouth, right it is like i'm huge on texture like that's what i look for in whiskey. I want a whiskey that is like going to just annihilate me, my, my mouth, you know, with just texture and oils. And yeah, this, this cheese is just like that. I mean, I can't get over how just like beautiful that texture is. Um, the flavor is like, I love goat cheese. I mean, I 
could eat that on a tire and be happy. <laughs> um, but this is like very different. It, it tastes more like, like dignified. Yeah. I guess. In well, a way. it's just, a, she's more mature. Yeah. You know, like we're used to fresh goat cheese, which is, you know, it's a lot more affordable for the cheesemaker to make fresh goat cheese as they don't have to age it. So like, this is an expensive cheese to make, but I mean, man, she tastes expensive. <laughs> really? It really like, and when I went to, so I was able to pick for anyone out there who is looking to pick up any of these, I was able to go to just my local Whole Foods and find literally everyone that you had sent over to me. Um, cool. And they were just like, oh yeah, here it is. Here it is. And I was like, oh, I didn't, it was that easy. Um, but I know we'll, we'll talk a, a little bit later on where maybe you recommend some great places to pick up some cheese. Oh, totally. um, but now do we taste the whiskey? Yeah, totally. Okay. I love how spicy this one is. It's delicious. Um, the first flavor note that came to my mind, and this is like, I feel like this always comes to me like when I have especially a younger whiskey. Um, and so it's just something that like is in the scotch family. But the first flavor was banana. Oh. Specifically like a little bit of like bananas foster. So like not fresh banana, but like a banana that's been cooked in sugar. and has like a little bit of vanilla in there. So every time I have that, like whenever that flavor comes out, my first thought is Gouda because Gouda naturally has that like sweet caramelized, uh, especially cow's milk flavored uh, Goudas, but this one too, um, goat's milk one too. So that way you can really complement it. Like I love to like pick out one characteristic in whatever I'm trying to pair and then just see like, can I complement it? Can I contrast it? And yeah. what do I need to do to make sure that nothing gets thrown out of balance? So you don't want to like, with a whiskey that's like this, like you don't, I wouldn't go full, like super intense blue because it is a little bit more delicate than some of the other whiskeys we have tonight. Yeah. I'm sure it would still go with blue if you're just doing it like one-on-one, -on -one. but you just want to make sure that you aren't, nothing is going to overpower the other. Okay. Um, well, I think, so for, for this particular, for this particular whiskey, this was in uh, an ex Oloroso, the, the cask type is ex Oloroso. So you get that like nutty, that like exactly. figgy, like raisin, um, those kind of like deeper fruit flavors. Um, and it, it pairs and you do get that like nice level of spice. And I'm very excited to taste them together. Yeah. <laughs> I recommend taking a bite of the cheese and a sip of the whiskey okay. and then just like swirl them around in your palate. Okay. So legit rat tattooing moment right here. Exactly. It's this is it. Sure. This is it. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh where have you been all my life waiting for you oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> that is that is amazing mm -hmm. I mean I feel like the whiskey has this like that big prominent kind of like spice especially even in the like sensation on your palate. And then that cheese just comes in and it's like a blanket and it just like mm -hmm. softens every like little element of spice that's on your palate. And wow, that is special. Yeah. It's something I actually forgot to mention earlier. Um, because the cheese has the extra fat, it's not just like the absorption of it, like into your actual bloodstream, but the extra fat helps you, taste more flavors in the whiskey because it can carry those flavors across your palate because fat holds on to flavor. Like that's where most of flavor lies is in fat. Yeah. So they're really yeah, beneficial. It time. Especially with something that's like so intense, like whiskey, like the extra fat can really help you. Well, and especially like, you know, these are all like cast strength. So these are, mm -hmm. you know, in their purest form, you're getting like that high ABV. And so like to have that kind of intense feeling on your palate and then to have that cheese just like it like you can feel it like rolling like over your palate and just like extinguishing almost this like blaze i love that that's on your it's so it's so good okay i'm gonna like take a breath and <laughs> uh we did have a question for you from okay. uh jen uh 
actually there are a few questions. So uh, mm -hmm. first it says, Erica, what do you look for to call something a successful pairing? Yeah, I mean, I, a successful pair, the most successful pairing is when you get the third flavor. So that's the ratatouille moment. When you take one thing, you put it with something else and it creates like the fireworks. When there's another thing that happens in your mouth that doesn't taste like either of the components. Um, but really for me, when I'm putting together a pairing, like I don't, that's the ideal. Like that's what I'm always chasing. But I understand like that's not always going to happen. So more what I'm looking for, I guess, is what I'm not looking for is for anything to overpower or clash. So there is no really such thing as a perfect pairing altogether because everybody's palate's different, which is also like what makes exercises like this difficult. Right. However, um, there is definitely such a thing as a bad pairing and not everyone will feel it in the same degree, but when you put the wrong thing with the wrong cheese, you can get like a metallic flavor that comes through. This happens a lot in wine when you um, misjudge a pairing in wine and it literally tastes like metal. It's really gross. But for the most part, those they're more on the rare side. And really I'm just looking for the sum to be greater than the parts. It was a long answer to a short question. <laughs> and then Jen asked, uh, curious, what is the historical context for whiskey and cheese pairings? A transitioning Scottish thing or stems from some other place or more recent thing? Yeah, gosh, you know, I don't really know the answer to that question. I would really love to know the answer. Um, I know that when I first, weirdly enough, whiskey and cheese pairings are my number one requested class. So I've done this, it's, I've done it more than any other class aside from like my basic 101. Um but yeah, like when I first started doing it, I really struggled to try to, to find resources on cheese and whiskey pairings. So I really just had to like ask people who had done it before and taste it. I would say that there must be a historical context because, you know, especially in America, because bourbon is really closely linked to the beginnings of our country as it was like a big source of income. I mean, after rum, um, and cheese was also very important to the economy in early America as well. So like, I imagine they were eating it together, but I don't know if they were like doing like a, you know, like a, a pairing session. Right. Also they were like building yeah. early America, so they were busy. <laughs> I mean, it does make sense though. I mean, you're eating cheese and what, I mean, what did you drink back in the day? Exactly. Whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm sure it has to, it had to have happened. And it was probably um, the Scottish that invented it too. There's a lot of <laughs> There's really great dairy land in the whole United Kingdom. So there's a lot of cheese out there. And then I think there was another one. And Kim asked, Erica, what are your thoughts with adding jam, honey, et cetera, to whiskey tasting cheese plates? Oh yeah. Super fun. I mean, you, everything that you add is going to muddle your palate more because like you're just adding on. If you do like more of like a naked pairing, I would call this, where you're just like doing whiskey and cheese. I threw in some orange slices onto my plate just so I could have an extra palate cleanse. But I mean, you're able to taste so much of the individual parts. But if you're not doing like a formal tasting like this and you're just like feeding yourself or having a good time, then absolutely add honey and jam. I would say dark chocolate is a phenomenal addition. Um, and anything that would play off of the natural flavors in whiskey. So I would say I love adding, actually, what am I doing? I literally have a whiskey cheese plate in my book. Um, yes. <laughs> something I don't have, find that page. Um, something I don't include in there is ginger snaps, which I would I think have I have it bookmarked. Or it's page 284. Oh, look at you. Thank you. It's bookmarked. <laughs> Yeah, so we have an entire whiskey cheese plate. Um, I have Midnight Moon on it because it's one of my favorites, and the Pleasant okay, there it is Pleasant Ridge Reserve, which is also on our cheese plate. Um, but there's also Luxardo cherries, oranges once again, and pecans, which I think, and figs. So those are all things that are traditionally paired with whiskey anyway, like in a cocktail. Um, but they also go really well with cheese. I mean, not everyone puts Luxardo cherries on their cheese plate. That is so extra, but. Oh, I really love them. I'm for it. I know. I mean, I cut them in half because, like, it's so intense. But, yeah. I also so that, have oat cookies on here. I think oats are because you just, like, have, like, that grain theme in whiskey. Oats are really great to add. Hmm. Yeah. I'll have to try that. I'm going to literally be trying, like, everything with cheese now. Yeah. Like, oh, oh oatmeal this morning. What cheese goes with this? 
everything. Oh my God, toast. Toast and cheese in the morning. That's my number one breakfast. <laughs> so many iterations. I'm going to turn into cheese after this. Join the club. And all right. Well, there are a few other questions coming in that we'll definitely get to, but um, shall we move on to number two? Yes. This is one of my favorite <laughs> cheeses. I'm going to say this about every cheese on the plate. <laughs> I'm going to like this is my favorite mouth. child. I know yeah, exactly. Like a child. Um, so this is, I had, I gave you any Alpine style cheese and then I suggested specifically uh, Pleasant Ridge Reserve. So I'm going to mostly talk about that, but feel free to ask me questions about specific yes. Alpine cheeses. Yes, exactly. You got the exact one. Um, this cheese is absolutely phenomenal. It comes from Dodgeville, Wisconsin, which is one of the only areas in the Midwest that wasn't uh, flattened by glaciers so it's a really beautiful terroir it's just this gorgeous rolling um meadows uh, with cows grazing on them the cheesemaker andy hatch only makes two different cheeses so he makes this one during the summer months when the cows are out at pasture and grazing on those beautiful rolling hills of wisconsin um and then in the winter time the milk becomes really really rich and dense and they can't they don't have enough to make this and also like the the milk quality doesn't really work with a aged cheese like this. So instead they make this cheese called Rush Creek Reserve, which is, and like I keep saying this, but like it is probably <laughs> my top three favorite cheeses of all time. It's just like a little wheel. that's like a hot tub of cheese. Like it has a, this um, bark around it and you take off the top and you just like dip shit into it. I have potato tots in there all the time. Or like, <gasps> Oh my gosh. A cheesemonger told me to do barbecue chips, which I haven't done yet, but I'm like, oh my God. Pringles specifically are a great cheese or a chip to pair of cheese, but I digress. <laughs> um, so it, this is a, they're both the cheeses are raw milk, which is what's most important in this conversation. Um, they also take a lot of care of their pasture to make sure they're including native flora, to make sure they're rotating the cows, that can become overgrazed. It really is one of the most romantic, perfect, beautiful examples of cheese making in Africa. Um, it's just such a spectacular cheese. Every single wheel is different because every batch is different because they have to just constantly be adjusting the recipe to fit what's happening in, in the milk. I mean, that's the beauty of working with raw milk, pastured cows. So definitely, to, first of all, take a look at her. You'll notice that she has this beautiful golden like yes color. That's because the cows are at pasture in the summer and the rich the grass is rich with beta carotene which turns their milk yellow well turns the cheese yellow but it's like yellow tinged milk when you concentrate it whatever that's just chemistry anyway smell it <laughs> i know i've been like it 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 really does remind me of i was in ireland a couple of years ago and went Aww. and visited this biodynamic farm and had whiskey that was made from grain you know that was grown on this biodynamic farm and that the whiskey had such a farmy aroma to it. Mm -hmm. um, like you really smelled like the place. And this whiskey reminds me so much of that. I mean, there is, or this cheese reminds me so much of that. It's, there is like a, a very like farmy kind of note in this. And, but it's like, it's, it's so comforting. I mean, I grew up on mm. a farm. Maybe that's why I find comfort in that. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's but, why you get the comfort, but like other people would, could possibly also get the farm too. Like I definitely get the farm as well. I've been to this farm. So like that also is like the memory that might oh be. Oh my gosh. Home. I know lucky me lives in Chicago. So I definitely get to go to Wisconsin whenever I can. Um, I definitely get grass. I mean, this cheese tastes different with every single batch. So we definitely have two different batches. Who knows like how different our different wedges are. Um, but I almost always get toasted nuts. That's a note that I get pretty much any Alpine style cheese. Um, this is made with a recipe that's used in the Alps and the French Alps, the, the recipe for before. It's a little bit different, but so it's still technically like an Alpine style cheese, but it's obviously like not from the actual Alps. So definitely give it a taste and like really yeah, master like it. Make sure you're like chewing it too, like, cause you want to, you want to feel all of the flavors. It's very I dense. Do. I do <laughs> want to feel them all. Yes. <laughs> okay. All the ASMR coming up hot. <laughs> Cultured butter first. Yes. Like the texture of this is so interesting. 
So good. Like, I don't think I've ever had a cheese like this. Like, ever. Sometimes it's, like, a little tacky for me. Like, when I, they aren't too tacky, but it's almost like eating, like, a caramel or something. You know how it kind of gets yes. stuck in your teeth? But this one yes. works as well faster. I was like, is it just me? Or, like, mm -hmm. am I allowed to say that? No, no, <laughs> yes, no. Absolutely. Well, because it's an aged cheese, too, so much of the moisture is drained out and evaporates. So it has such a density to it. It's not just, like, a density of flavor, but, like, it really is, like, very compact as far as, like, the fats and the, the solids of the milk. But I feel like you can, like, you're, you you feel like you're chewing, like, you're literally, like, chewing the, the fats of this cheese, like, like gum almost. Like, you're exactly. feeling, like, you're, you're feeling it all, really. Wow. Fruit leather. Yeah. That is exact. That is a great, even the way it feels in your hand, like, even this tiny little bit almost feels like a like a gummy of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, I've never, I've never had anything like this. This is really, it's delicious and such a like sensory, like explosion thing. I've never, I've never experienced this really? before ever. <laughs> totally. I love that you're loving like both of these cheeses for their textures. I would definitely recommend just exploring Would anytime you see a Gouda and anytime you see like an alpine style cheese and if you don't like just ask the cheesemonger like show me an alpine style cheese like explore these categories because if you're loving the texture like girl there's so much more out there for oh my you. gosh it is i love i love 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 the texture of this cheese oh my it could literally taste like nothing and i would eat it right but yet it tastes wow. like everything it's almost floral too which i really love like you so the thing with like cows grazing on pasture like the actual things that they're eating isn't going specifically into their milk because the milk changes as it's like fermenting as it's in the body as it turns into cheese there's like so many things that happen but what's cool i learned about this when i was interviewing a cheesemaker while i was writing my book while they're grazing and they're like smelling what they're grazing that travels into their olfactory system into the milk so like if they're like, like they're smelling yeah so they're like past if they're like grazing on garlic like chives or something like chive flowers there could be a note of chive flowers in the milk because that's what they smelled and then they got milked and they use the milk to turn into cheese isn't that is that crazy that is insane <laughs> that is that's for real it's real wow yeah amazing wow that is i never knew that that's really mm -hmm. awesome super cool um <laughs> All right. Well, let's, shall we taste the whiskey now with it? <laughs> so the whiskey that we are pairing with this is uh, cask 46.111, which was part of our mid-month outturn preview. Um, tasting that, uh, our, our mid-month outturn. Um, it is called Full Frontal Fruit Bowl. And this is an 11-year space side at 56% ABV and our juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile. All right, I'm gonna taste the whiskey and then taste the cheese this time. And then together. The next whiskey is so good. Is, I know, it's, this was one of my favorites. Um, the thing that like stuck out to me right away was like that woody, like piney resin flavor that comes out. It just made me think of like being in a cabin. So like, and then I got really romantic with it. And I was just like, oh, it's like being in like a Swiss chalet and just like eating Alpine style cheeses. <laughs> I, I always put an Alpine style cheese on a whiskey plate because it's a go-to. I mean, it goes with the, so many, so many pairings in there. Um, but specifically yeah. like spicier whiskeys and I have like that woodsy flavor. So good with an Alpine style cheese. I pair it with yeah, rye. This is, I'm going to, I'm going to do this pairing again, but while I'm doing that, um, there are some questions coming in for you. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one is from Multicasking. Uh, Erica, SMWS has 12 flavor profiles. Are there specific cheeses that pair well with each whiskey profile or is it more uh, bottle specific? Yeah, I would say whiskey profiles for sure. Um, that's one of the things I really love about pairing cheese and whiskey is that there's a lot more flexibility than something like than wine does. Um, and yeah, I mean, especially if you have like a profile, you know what you're getting. And like, there are things, there are times that I was like surprised myself with what um, ended up going with what, 
but for the most part, the profile for sure. And then, you know, you have to have some room for experimentation for error, especially if you're going to be that broad, but I usually go by the whiskey profile and then go from there. Okay. And I saw a few other ones come in. Let's see if I can find them. Um, so Jared asks, I love a uh, Manchego and dry salami as a safe pairing with any scotch, but I'm normally a proud member of the blue cheese gang. Well, Jared, you're in luck because we have one of those, I think, coming up. Right? Uh, yes, yeah, the last one. <laughs> what kind of scotch can I pair with a Roquefort to fix my life? The 23 year. Oh, oh my ring light. <laughs> the 23 year. You can kind of see it. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's definitely my favorite. Um, I'll talk about it later, but it reminded me. I'm so excited for that one. It's so good. But yeah, I mean, I do a lot of whiskey cocktails. So blue cheese is so salty that I love it with a whiskey cocktail. So like a Manhattan and old fashioned. Um, I've done a Boulevardier, but I think they're better with Alpine style cheeses because they're like already have that bitterness. And sometimes the blue cheese is like Ugh, too much bitterness. Um but yeah, I mean, I definitely, I go in the cocktail direction when it comes to whiskey and blue cheese pairings, but like you can, you can go crazy. I mean, bourbon's fantastic. Um, there's something with like a sweeter edge to it, I would say, because that helps complement the, or contrast against the salty blue cheese. And then one more from Jason. Are there specific types of cheese that go better with different spirits compared to others? Hard cheese, soft cheese? For sure. Yeah. I have a whole, um, spirit pairing guide in my book because of this. Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's hard to do specific, like going into like hard cheese, soft cheese. Like I break it down a little bit further. Uh, one of my favorite pairing combinations would be a, a hard sheep's milk cheese with gin. Super delicious. You have that like super herbaceous note from the gin and then pairing that with the like herbaceous nutty, uh, sheep's milk cheese. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, with like rums, I usually do like something that's like on the sweeter side, such as like a Grana Padano or like, um, something that has like some of those pineapple notes, so like a really, really aged cheese. Parmigiano Reggiano is fantastic. And aged Gouda is fantastic. Anything that has like that toasty, roasty flavor to it is a really good with rum. But yeah, I mean, and then oh, tequila also. Oh. So good. <laughs> um, any grassy cheeses as you have like a little bit of a grassy flavor. And then the last one I'll say is vodka with Limburger. Limburger is one of those cheeses that some people absolutely despise. And it tastes like, it smells like death sometimes. It really does. But with a shot of vodka and a pickle and a piece of rye toast, it really is delicious. There was just a comment about that, uh, that Jason uh, had made earlier that he was able to try a Limburger for the Fine. first time over the holidays and not as stinky as I thought it'd be. <laughs> There's different levels. So like sometimes we'll get a younger ro or just a younger Limburger, like a different batch and it's not that bad. So I've, I've had them and I've been surprised. I'm like, oh, this isn't that bad. Maybe it's not as bad as I remember it. And then I'll get the next one and I'll be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what died in here? <laughs> what happened? And it's still, it was still a good cheese. It wasn't ammoniated. Like I could tell that like it was a healthy cheese. She was just real healthy. Real healthy. <laughs> well, speaking of real healthy, um, the the last two cheeses that we're gonna taste, I I have not opened them yet. Yeah. Um, because was... they yeah they're they're a little they're a little funky. Well, right. There's yeah there's there's a little funk in there. Um, the and the next one is in a a wheel. Oh, fun! So, you got the gin. You got the is it the gin soaked arbison? This is. Oh yes. my God, it's so fun. So the Rush Creek Reserve, I was just talking about the like sister to the Pleasant Ranch. This is the same style. So like, here, open it up. I'll tell you how to. Okay, get let me, let me open it up. And plastic, get her out of that. She's just a stinky. I was like, girl, you're staying in there for right now. You might want to spoon for that one. It's gooey. If it's at the right edge, which you probably, oh, love it. She's <laughs> ready. She's here for it. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can. Oh, I'm excited. Figure out here. So this cheese that we're going to taste is a washed rind, yes. correct? Yes. Can you explain what that means while I'm getting my this pleasure. opened? Um, a wa Ooh, my cheese just totally fell apart, but it's awesome. So this is a washed rind cheese. You can always tell that it is a washed rind because it has this orange outside. So it should be like reddish there. Exactly. There's like a little bit of a blush to it. This one's like super washed. I think that one's probably like a little bit 
more tame than like this crazy. She's just crazy. Um, but you'll tell that you'll always be able to tell that it's a wash dry by smelling it because it's the stinkiest one. It really does smell like <laughs> um, it's bathed in a brine solution. Sometimes it has mold in it. Sometimes there's a little bit of alcohol in it. But what it does is that it kills off certain bacteria and then feeds other bacteria with the sugars from the alcohol or whatever, um, you know, or the, like the molds or bacteria that are in there. And it helps create this rind on the outside, which in turn ripens the inside. Okay. So these, the way you're going to cut it, you're going to take it and then take your knife right above where the bark is. You have to be careful. You're just going to slice all the way around. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You're just going to slice all the way around the circumference. And you should be able to tell like how ripe it is. If you just like touch the top and if it feels like a waterbed, then she's, <laughs> she's going to be crazy. I'm excited for you. Have you ever had a cheese like this before? No, I not I I've definitely had a cheese that looks like this. I have no idea what it was. Okay. Um, but I've never had this. Yeah. I don't know. My light is terrible. Look at yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> oh my gosh. She she's gooey and stinky and funky and gonna be delicious. Oh yeah, my just gosh. stick your spoon like, right in there. I don't even know if I can see. Oh my god, no, you can see it. <laughs> it's crazy. Look at this. Ah! Oh. Ooh, wow. I know it just got hot in here. It just got right. hot. She took off that top. Okay. Yeah. So there is what it looks like on the inside. Insane. <laughs> like a little personal. Fun. Okay. Please. Yes. All right. So what do I do next? Stick your spoon right in there and then give us a nice cheese pull. Oh, that's not a very good one. Oh, it's all right. I'm, not, yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. There you go. All right. Well, sure that's is. what you get. <laughs> all right. Give it a smell. I'm going to take a bite of mine. Oh, the inside doesn't smell as like funky. So a lot of it's yeah. on the rind. Give it a try. And then I'm going to tell you a fun little fact. Okay. Intense. So good. Mm. Mm -hmm. It almost has like a bacony, like meaty flavor to it. Like if I tasted this blindly, like not knowing what I was eating, I don't know if I would guess that this was cheese. Yeah. What would you think it was? I mean, it almost has like a, I mean, texturally, it's like yogurt, almost mm -hmm. like a, mm -hmm. like a yogurty, like a thick custard, like exactly. yogurt. Um, but the almost like it kind of gives me like pate vibes. Cool, yeah, totally. Um, because it is like it's me, it is meaty. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I'm expecting that. So one of the cool things about wash and cheeses, and I always tell people this after I've had them eat it, but one of the reasons why it's orange on the outside is because of a bacteria called Brevibacterium linens. That bacteria actually also lives on human skin. And it's one of the reasons why or like we get body odor. So when you smell mm. a cheese and you're like, it smells like stinky feet. Like there's a reason for that. It actually does smell like stinky feet. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, this is bizarre. I mean, this, this in itself, I, I cannot recommend, please go out and buy this cheese. And I mean, no. just for this experience, it is worth it. It almost tastes like it's like infused with like chives and yeah, totally. like spices. And so like, savory. There's so, I'm so blown away right now. I'm telling you, try it with hot tater tots. It will blow your mind. Okay. Or French fries, waffle cut fries. Oh you don't do much crazy, like Orida, you know, just get the freezer ones. I mean, this is like mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so yes. good. Okay. I have to take a breath here. I know. <laughs> We're going to pair this with <laughs> cast number 41144, uh, a deep soul. I Last I checked, there are only eight of these left on the website. Um, crazy. And this whiskey, yeah, this whiskey is. It's so funny that you paired this cheese with this whiskey because when I first tasted this whiskey, I was like, wait a second. I was like, this 
like reading the notes on paper and knowing kind of where it comes from and uh, the, the cask type that it was in. So this was in two types of uh, butts. So it was in an ex Oloroso American oak butt. And then it went into uh, first of all, ex Pedro Jimenez Spanish oak butt. Um, and when I tasted it, you almost get this like really nice whisper of smoke on, mm -hmm. on like, the very yeah. front. And I was like, okay. Something's up, like, is my palate off today? Like, why am I getting that? Because it's not what I was expecting to get in this whiskey. Um, but much like this cheese, you know, you smell it and you're like, oh, this smells like, you know, grandpa's feet. And it's like funky and like musty. And then you taste it and it's just like, I mean, it's it's so silky and like meaty and salty and like so delicious. It's not what you thought it was going to be. So I think this is like the perfect, I can't wait to taste these together. Yeah. It's so perfect. Yeah. This bottle is actually made on my birthday. It is. I know. I know. On my oh 17th my birthday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, oh, birthday whiskey. Fun. I like it. Right. Man, this was really meant to be. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I have to say that like all the other whiskeys, I made these pairings and then I tasted them and I was like, cool, done. This one gave me some trouble because it is intense. Like that smoky flavor that comes through is just like, which can be difficult to pair with specific cheeses. She just overwhelms. So I originally had it with a, a sheep's milk cheese. And then it just, it was like, it wasn't a bad pairing, but I just, I was like, I can't really taste the sheep's milk cheese anymore. Like it was just this, this whiskey's delicious, but it was just like, whoa, I'm like, I feel like I'm in a, like a smoky lounge, you know? The cheese is just not there. So I was like, yeah. I have to pull out the big ones. So I went like all the way with this stanky one. When you put them together, for me, it tastes like a, like burgers from the grill. Oh my gosh. I'm done here. <laughs> that, that is perfect. Oh, so glad That is perfect. That is and just like you said, it literally does taste like something off of a grill. Mm -hmm. There's like, oh my gosh, you get that like meaty, silken like profile from the cheese. And then that whiskey comes in and you get that just puff of smoke that covers your whole palate. And then there's like subtle sweetness on like the back end of it. But those two things together, that is religious. Wow. Mm -hmm. I felt the same way. Especially because it's like such a fun indulgent experience eating like a stinky, ooey gooey wash around cheese. <laughs> it really, it, it's like a personal date, you know? You just take yourself on a date with these two things. Yeah, this, I feel like this pairing, like, I mean, they're all like so phenomenal, but this particular one like takes you somewhere. Like, this really does transport you. I don't know where I'm going, but I like it. That is outstanding. Well, there is a question from Ian. Do you have a cheese knife recommendation? Yeah, totally. Um, I, cover, I was going to say it again. I cover this in my book, but um, <laughs> I love having the cute little cheese knives. I got these from Bosca. They're really great. Um, but honestly, in reality, I really usually only use butter knives and steak knives if I'm you know, I, I use these for the photos for sure. But like, if I need something, I usually just use a butter knife or a steak knife. That's really all you need. Um, when you're actually cutting up cheese, you want to use a chef's knife. And if you're cutting a like really soft cheese, I recommend using a paring knife or something with a really skinny blade. That's when a specialty cheese put, uh, cheese knife is really helpful. But I do like the brand Bosca. It's B-O-S-K-A. They have a lot of variety. Um, I would get yourself like one of those skinny blade knives because it just makes cutting like really soft cheeses so much easier. It's really hard to do without them, honestly, without like smashing it. But other than that, you can get yourself like the little mini knife set if you want. But like I said, steak knives and butter knives are all you really need. That is good. That is what I have. I mean, I have like a big chef's knife. That I was like, I don't know if I want to bring that in here to cut cheese with. I mean, honestly, if you're cutting like a hard cheese, like the Gouda or the Pleasant Ridge, like the chef's knife is the best tool. Okay. You can't use this dinky little guy on a aged I use Gouda. this little guy. Yeah, she was good, but she's a real Wives knife. nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so that was of the three so far. I mean, that one is like, after this is over, I'm going to 
destroying that for a while. Yeah. And if you have any potato chips on hand, I'm telling you, throw it in the mix. I have some, I have some truffle potato chips. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. And the dip Normally those in like the cheese. Careful, but like with this pairing, oh my gosh. It's already so intense. Yeah. <laughs> this, this pairing is, I can't wait to like share this with my husband. Oh my God. Uh, like, so if, like we're going to do the full thing, like everything. I'm going to have the book. I'm going to do the full spread because mm -hmm. this is like, when you think of pairings, it's like, oh yeah, I like to pair, you know, whiskey with cheese or chocolate. And it's just like, again, like whatever you have, like in the fridge, just like easy stuff. I've never like gone out of my way to like really dive into the world of cheese. And this is like, I don't, I don't think I'll ever be able to look at cheese the same oh, ever again. Is, like after this, I want to do. <laughs> like I have like this new appreciation for it, you know, much like I did with whiskey, you know, once upon a time. And I remember when you sent me over the list, I was looking at it and I was like, what the heck? Like, I don't know what any of this means, you know? And I think it's similar to what a lot of people feel getting into whiskey. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, I don't know, you know, what is, what is this Bayside whiskey? You know, what is a, a single grain whiskey? Like there's mm -hmm. so many, you know, different terms and it's a little overwhelming sometimes, but you know, even in reading through the book, it really does break it down for you and you feel like confident in like going and like picking things out. And um, it's, yeah, I'll never, I'll never look at cheese the same again. <laughs> Not really touching my heart. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> and I, I, I hope everyone out there watching, you get a new appreciation for this. And and again, I can't recommend the book enough. It's it's such a deep dive into this world. And I feel like the more you learn about other things, you know, and taste other things, the more I can take that back and apply it to whiskey. You know, I'm going to taste all of these things in cheese that I've never tasted before. And then I'm going to be able to go and taste whiskeys and I'm like, oh, wait, you know what? This like reminds me of that cheese I had you know, that Erica recommended to me or, you know, it's, it's just a really cool thing. So um, I'm going to wipe my tears away. <laughs> and with that, shall we cruise on into the final, the final, the final one? The finale. The finale. So which blue cheese do you have? I have uh, a Mons 1924 blue. Oh, cool. Herve Mons. Yeah, totally. So that comes from kind of like the central like, kingdom of blue cheese in France. It's called the Auvergne region. Um, and it's just as like a really great climate and like a lot of caves. So blue cheese pretty much originated there. Um, blue cheese is the original blue cheeses were cave aged. The mold was like already in the cave and it just kind of like latched on and people kind of figured out how to work with that. So it's that cave aged blue cheese. It's super so, good, super creamy, and it's yeah, okay. it's beautiful. It's gonna be absolutely perfect. Um, I'm over in Ireland over here. I've got Cashel's Irish blue cheese, which is also really fantastic. A little bit of a similar uh, flavor profile. I think this one's a little bit more on the farmy side. So this this cheese was aged in a cave. Yeah. No big deal. Okay. Yeah. I know, super OG. <laughs> and is there a preferred way for me to cut this cheese? Um, for a cheese, blue cheese like that, like it's really hard to get a clean cut on it. So I just kind of okay. slice into her. I would butter knife it. Um, okay. You can slice like with the wedge, like we did with the Gouda, if you want to try that. So you can keep the rest of it intact. So like the next time you put it on a cheese plate, if in the unlikely event that you don't finish it today, it still like looks like a presentable piece. But okay, don't worry too much if you can't get a clean cut. It's really hard to. Yeah, it's cr It's a little crumbly. Yeah, she's crumbly. See, this it's one, the one that I have is a little bit on the drier side. It tends to like hold up better. Okay. But, yeah, so definitely give this one a smell. Like a smell. It's kind of intense. Blue cheeses are always really intense. Um, a lot of people say they like eat cheese first and blue second because blue cheese can totally obliterate your palate. And you won't be able to like go back and taste the midnight moon anymore because it's like your palate's all blue. Well, that is, it's really interesting because the whiskey that we're pairing it with is a peated whiskey. And we mm -hmm. always say that too, you know, in tasting whiskeys, oh. always make sure you have your peated whiskey last um, because it is, you know, so intense in flavor that that peat will just mask anything else that you try to taste. So to have a peated whiskey and then go back to something, you know, that's 
fruity and, you know, orchard fruit forward from Speyside, it makes it a little difficult. So perfect, perfect pairing for that. Love it. So I will, uh, we are going to be tasting, um, and I'll let you dig into the cheese a little bit more, um, but we are going to be pairing this with cask 66.196 portrait of deception. And this is a 23 year Highland whiskey. Um, that was in ex bourbon and then went into an ex port hogshead. So I love this whiskey. Me too. I'm excited this was to my taste favorite. It. <laughs> I was like, obviously, it's special. Be the bougie old one. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is special. Though. This particular distillery, um, we've been able to release some whiskeys that are a little over twenty years old from this distillery as of late, and they've all been just, I mean, like otherworldly. And so I just thought, let's go out with a bang, and you know, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. When I first tried this whiskey, for some reason, it just made me think of Sauterne, but like a much more savory, intense, peated version of that. But there is this like almost like dried, sweet, caramelized, like nectar in there, almost like floral too. Like it was more delicate than I was expecting it to be. I and mean, there definitely is like an intensity about it, but there's it's funny, like my, my, my favorite society cask, I know I'm not allowed to have favorites, but I do. Um, it was in an ex sauterne cask. And mm. the first, what I loved so much about that whiskey is that it, it had a blue cheese note in it. Oh my like, God. This whiskey makes me think I'm like in a chateau in France, like eating a table full of like funky cheese. Like there was just that note in it. So it's really interesting to hear you say that. I wonder if there's some type of like connection there um but yeah my my favorite it was called sensual sensory sensation too and i know <laughs> i know i miss it dearly it was it, it was I perfect were <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was the whole experience was amazing i just wish i have i had had it to to pair you know yeah cheese, only you do then what you know now i know it's like I having know. that with broke for which is my favorite blue cheese and it's like the original blue cheese it's just a good Roquefort is really unlike anything else. So you want to talk about texture? Girl. <laughs> but Hervé Mons, um, that blue is got a, it's almost like a similar take on Roquefort, but it's made with cow's milk versus sheep's milk. Okay. So it smells butter. like a farm. It yeah. smells like a barn. Yeah. Like it reminds me of childhood. Like horses and like almost like manure but not in a bad way totally and like you remember and grain the cow was probably selling some manure yeah, yeah. well thanks cow mm -hmm. this is like melty yeah melts wow palate like butter on a steak it literally just melts yeah you don't even have to chew this mm-hmm Oh, and it's like salty. Blue cheese is always extra salty because the mold like needs to have extra salt in order to grow. Mm. And so that's what all of these little blue veins are, right? Yeah. Oh, it's penicillin over 40. So that's so all require salt and oxygen to grow. Um, so you'll see, turn it to the side again. You'll see that there's like the yes. other side. You'll see that there's like little like lines. That's where the cheesemonger pointed, uh, poked it with the cheesemaker poked it with needles in order to let in oxygen, and that's why there's like a oh, line. Interesting. So they they encourage mold to grow. Totally. I mean, that's what makes this cheese what it is. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, this is delicious. This is a, a great way to end. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right. Well, I gotta try Anything. it with the whiskey. So good, so decadent. Whoa. Whoa. That is, there's almost like little crystallized like pieces in this cheese. 
Yeah, that's actually another cheese crystal. It's not the same cheese crystal as what's in the Gouda, um, but it's also a cheese crystal. And they're almost like chewy, so it's like it all melts, and then you still have some of that whiskey in your mouth, and then you get those little like chewy bits. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that is. I don't think I was. I think I was expecting the cheese to like really overwhelm my palate. Mm -hmm. But they really do work very well together. Like you really, yeah. one doesn't, like you were saying, you know, you don't want to, you know, have too much of a contrast. Like these really do work really beautifully together. Like very harmonious pairing. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. So very, glad you enjoyed very it. Delicious. I was very yes. the way this one turned out. I was like, I could yeah. eat that forever. Yeah, this is, this is uh, so crazy. Um I, I, again, I'm never going to look at cheese the same. <laughs> oh my gosh. My husband's going to be like, where's all of our money gone? I'm like, oh, don't look in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of the fridge, what is the best way to store these? Yeah, totally. It's a great, great question. Um, I just made a TikTok about that, this, and there's just so many follow-up questions. I'm like, this is a long conversation. Anyway, so... I recommend for a aged cheese like the Gouda or the Pleasant Ridge or a cheddar or anything like that. Um, in pretty most cheeses, I recommend wrapping in either specialty cheese paper or you can do parchment paper or wax paper or even like the bees wrap. If you're going to do the latter three and not the specialty cheese paper, I have to have some reinforcement. Um, so like a Tupperware or like a Ziploc. But basically what you're trying to do, cheese is a living product like we talked about. Um, it needs to breathe and it especially needs to breathe through the rind. So you want to have adequate airflow, but you don't have too much airflow because like the fridge is really dry. So that can totally dry out. Yeah. Cheese. So you need to have a little bit of humidity, which is why I like to do the Ziploc or like a Tupperware or something to like keep the humidity in, but also allow, I mean, cheese doesn't need that much air. It's not, doesn't actually have lungs. It's not breathing, but it does need oxygen and otherwise it'll go bad. Um, you can do that with pretty much any cheese. Fresh cheeses like mozzarella, feta, ricotta, they need to be eaten immediately. So like keep them in whatever container they're in. Like you probably do need an airtight container like that because you don't want any of the molds to grow right. on it. Um, a cheese that's like super gooey, like this guy, I would recommend putting it in like a Tupperware by itself with like a deli container like a, or a deli container. And I even put like a tiny piece of wet paper towel in there, just like wet with water. Okay. Because that just provides a little extra humidity. Um, okay. You don't really want to store those. Like you should eat them very quickly. Like if you have, I'm just gonna eat this. <laughs> yeah, no. Like you, you shouldn't be storing them. You should eat it. For most cheeses, that's the case. But I mean, firm cheeses have been aged for a really long time. Like they can handle. And like Parmigiano Reggiano, I usually buy like a two pound piece of it and then just like keep it in my fridge. If there's a little bit of mold that grows on it, you scrape it off. It's not a big deal. Like mold loves to grow on cheese. It's gonna happen eventually if you're not eating yeah. it right away. But Aged cheeses last a really, really, really long time. So yeah, I mean, okay. the specialty cheese paper is the easiest version of this answer, but you can also do like parchment, wax, or bees wrap in a Ziploc or Tupperware. Perfect. I will be sure. I have parchment paper, so I will be wrapping Later. bees up in that tonight. Um, so yeah, I guess, I mean, that kind of concludes our, our big whiskey and cheese pairing. I mean, this was like such a treat. I can't even believe that this is what I'm doing tonight. It's so crazy. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge. Um, I don't know. I Let me just check and make sure there are no last minute questions. And Jason asked, my local cheese store wraps everything in cling wrap and then paper. Should I take the cheese out of the cling wrap when I get home? Yeah, definitely. Um, they're doing that just to make sure it stays protected in transportation, make sure it doesn't dry out if you keep it in your fridge for a long time. So if you're buying it from the cheese store, I honestly, I always recommend to only buy as much cheese as you can eat within a few days from the cheese shop. So if you're doing that, then like, just take it out and eat it all or take it out and just keep it in its paper. Um, and if the, you know, it depends on the paper. Cause like some cheese shops do use like a wax paper, which can have too much airflow and it'll cause it to dry out. So just to be safe, it's good to like keep it in a Tupperware or a Ziploc just to make sure, like if you can't eat it right away. That is good to know. I just have to go to the store all the time. 
the army to buy cheese. <laughs> So awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, before we kind of jump off, um, I can you tell everybody where they can? I think this is I have your website and your Instagram. Um, but is there anywhere else that they can find you or the book? Where's a great place to buy the book? Um, I'm on all social media. Um, if you're on TikTok, I can't use my handle because TikTok like isn't into sex. So <laughs> the E in sex is just a three. <laughs> Um, so that's the only other difference, but uh, you can find my book on bookshop.org. It's a really great uh, website Sorry, that supports it. local independent booksellers. You can also do Amazon if you want. Barnes and Noble carries it. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm always, if you ever have any questions about cheese, my DMs are always open, always happy to talk and help guide you in your journey. Um, but yeah, that's it. I really loved being here tonight. I don't always get to do We've done a lot of whiskey and cheese tastings, but I don't get to do them as much as I would love to, honestly. So <laughs> always a pleasure and so appreciative of all the leftover whiskey I have. Well, we hope you enjoy it. And yeah. we're going to be doing more of these pairings uh, throughout the course of the year. So if there is anything you would like to see paired with whiskey, you know, whether it's wine or chocolate or you know, some type oysters, anything, um, feel free to send me over an email and I'll see what I can do on that. Um, and then of course, if you're not a member of the society yet and you would like to be, you can find information over at our website at smwsa.com. And for any more little inside, you know, tips and tricks that we share um, about the society, please make sure you're following our Instagram at smwsamerica. And with that, I... All I can say is, you know, cheese Louise, this was amazing. <laughs> so thank you so much. And uh, we will see you all next time. All right, bye. <laughs>